your experience with dystonia and uh, DBS, of course? I've had generalized dystonia for 40 years. It took me 20 years to get a name for the condition that I have. And four years ago, I decided to have deep brain stimulation, which has been fantastic for me. It stopped me moving, which is one of the um, problems that people with dystonia have. They have involuntary movements, which they can't control. But with DBS, I have been very successful in, it has been successful in calming my body. How important is to have a diagnosis, a correct one? And is it important to know it any, in any case, even if, it, if it's a bad diagnosis? I think diagnosis is the key to any condition. If people are told quite early what they have, the 20 year wait that it took me to have a name given to my condition um, was rather like a weight being lifted off my shoulders. Um, it doesn't make any difference to the condition, but at least you have a name for it. And if people ask what's the matter with you, you clearly can say that you have dystonia. Can you explain us about the, the decision process of having DBS? If you know that the benefits you can get out of it and the, also the maybe the possible drawbacks? The decision I came to was that I had heard about DBS when it was um, introduced for people with dystonia. Um, the surgeon that I was following, um, his work, he was the man that I wanted to do this um, operation. I had heard various reports about how with some people the dystonia was very effective and with others it hadn't. Within the charity, we had mixed results. But I decided to go ahead, choosing my surgeon, who was very positive about what the outcome could be, outcome could be, and also he told me about the negatives that could happen. And certainly with DBS, you can stop the stimulation. So, that, so you're not going to be any worse afterwards if it doesn't have any effect. And with me, I've had this superb effect of remaining still. You're also actively involved in your association, ADIR, ADIR probably in English. Uh, what are the needs of the people that come to you, to your association? What, what the, the, are they asking for special treatment immediately? You are much confused. What, what's the point there? The charity that we created in the northeast of England is called ADA, which stands for Action, Dystonia, diagnosis, education and research. So we certainly try to support all the newly diagnosed people either by putting them in contact with someone who has a similar condition. We have tea and coffee at our hospitals where um, a, dis a person with dystonia um, will be able to chat to people. We have a helpline. We have um, a person who helps people with their uh, welfare benefits advice and we generally have uh, meetings where we have speakers of a variety of topics whether it's um, DBS or whether it is um, about botulinum toxin or whether we just have a, a friendly get together which the next function is Ritz, it's tea at the Ritz but it's really at a church hall in Gateshead. I think a lot of people need reassuring that um, A, they're not going to die from the condition they have because you don't die from dystonia, and they need reassuring that there are people around who are able to help them. We have specialised botulinum toxin nurses, nurses in the northeast who will always support them. So it is one region where botulinum toxin is available straight away when people get a diagnosis or often people are t told about botulinum toxin but to go away and think about it and let them know if that's what they want. Um, I think the other supportive issues are just being there so that there is somebody there who if they need advice or if they need to talk to somebody we have that available through the charity. Let's say you, you have a patient that comes to your association and 
is diagnosed with dystonia, what would be your suggestion about their own personal life, how they have to conduct it? I had um, generalised dystonia, and on reflection, it was the worst mistake I've ever made in my life, because at that particular point in time, I was actually teaching in a school, and I should have retrained to teach something else where I could have just sat down. My mantra to everyone who has dystonia and have a job is keep your job, do not um, give your job up. Go through every avenue about keeping the job and if it's impossible, then you have to give it up. But life on benefits is not the same as the positive life when you're working.